Hello my friends, today we are onto Lightroom Classic and we'll take this image from this to this. We will edit this bird photo just in Lightroom, we will not use Photoshop today. I just want to show you a couple of tips and tricks when editing wildlife onto Lightroom Classic. So let's go back to the original. As you can see, this image is my raw image. If I go here into library, you will see it's a raw image. And I shot it with my 200 to 600 millimeter lens at 600 millimeter, f6.3, that is wide open, and the shutter speed was 1 over 400. Uh, and I was doing it handheld. This is a hawk that was in my yard this afternoon. And it was really cold outside. I did not have time to get my tripod out, so I just did it all handheld. I saw 320. So let's get into editing the image. Now the first thing I want to do is to increase the exposure because obviously the image it's a little bit underexposed. I didn't want to use too high of an ISO and you know we'll go with that for now. Uh, now it looks a little bit washed out. I want to add a little bit of contrast. Every time you shoot in raw you will have kind of a flat image so you need to add some contrast. I will take the highlights down just a tiny little bit. Maybe negative 15, 16, something like that. And then I will open the shadows quite a bit just to brighten the image. Maybe plus 77. The white I'll bring them up a little bit just to uh, kind of add a little bit more contrast. Maybe around 44, 45, something like that. And then I'll bring down the blacks just a little bit. If you hold down option, when you adjust the whites and the blacks, you can bring out as well, you can see just a little bit of pure black. And I did the same thing with the whites, make sure I'm not clipping. If I move the whites to the right, you see now we're clipping. So I want to keep it under that. Something like that looks right to me. Then I can add a little bit of texture, maybe around 21, a little bit of clarity, maybe around 14. Now when it comes to color, we did our main exposure. Let's see, this is the before, this is the after. When it comes to color, one trick I like to use is to go into the calibration panel. Uh, you probably have this one at the very bottom over here. I moved mine because this is the way my workflow into Lightroom. I usually do my exposure and then I'm moving straight to calibration. And a trick for bringing more rich colors uh, naturally into your image is to move the saturation of the blue to the right. And you see how things are just popping up. So this was how it was before, without the calibration. And then here is if I do it at 100. Now 100 might be a little bit too much, so I'm bringing it down to maybe, I don't know, 70, 72. And I like the way things are looking. Now these greens over here are a little bit oversaturated, so we'll take care of that in a second. I'm not going to use the curved um, adjustment layer today, but I will go over here into the hue saturation and luminance and here what I would like to do is first of all I want to add some reds because the hawk has like a reddish tone to it so I'm gonna add maybe like 15 16 and then it definitely has a lot of orange if I move the orange let's see you see if I go to the max you'll see how it turns reddish obviously that's too much you don't want to go that much so I'll keep it down in the 30s 33 that looks good to me and now the foliage here, it's mainly yellow, and then it has some green. Even though you would think it's mostly green, it's actually mostly yellow. You see, if I move the yellows to the right or the left, it will make, have the biggest impact. So what I will do, I'll just tone them down a little bit so they're not so, you know, on your face. I'll take them to negative 17 for the yellows and maybe a negative 10 or so for the greens. And that kind of toned down the background, but it kept the nice colors onto the hawk. Now, one other thing, every time you deal with wildlife, you want to make sure the eyes are standing out. And there's a few things you need to look for. First of all, you want to make sure you have some catch light. If you don't have catch light in your wildlife um, eyes, it kind of looks dead. It's just dark and, you know, doesn't have that glimmer. So you want to make sure you have some catch light. We do have catch light here. The eyes are a little bit dark, so let's take care of that. I'll go over here into the masking and I'll just use a brush masking. And what I will do is I will paint into the eyes, both eyes, just like that. And I will open up the shadows to bring back some of that color. Now, 
something like that is good i'll take the blacks down just a little bit to keep the contrast and i'll bring up the whites just to make the you know catch light stand out so now if i turn this mask on and off this is the before this is the after before and after and that just makes the eye pop a little bit you can also add a little bit of uh, texture and clarity if you want maybe we'll just add a little bit you can add saturation whatever you might want so that is the eye we take took care of that let's go back to full screen here i would like to crop my image and i will do um eight by ten crop for this just because i wanted to post this image for instagram and i'll make sure the eyes is on the rule of thirds i would have liked if the eye was over here on these corners but rule of thirds is still really good i could you know crop this and make the eye go into the rule of thirds but then i feel like it's going to be a little bit weird and i don't know i'll just keep it onto that line there you go and maybe move it a little bit this way so we don't have so much of that tree in there so i will go with that for my crop let's move along um sharpening I want to hold down option while I move this masking because I want to sharpen just the hawk. I do not want to sharpen the background. You see, we're sharpening the hawk and the tree, and I am happy with that. Then remove chromatic aberration and I will profile correction. I do want to click those. And then I will add a little bit of vignette. Let's see. First, I'll take the amount all the way down just so I can see my vignette. I will bring the midpoint point a little bit inwards. Uh, the roundness, we can make it more square, more round. I'll go with something like that. I'll feather it all the way to 100. You see to the left, it's very, very sharp. To the right, it's very, very soft. And then I'll take the amount now to something that looks right. So you don't want to go too much, just a little bit. So maybe negative 9. Let's see our image so far. This is our before. This is the after, before and after. Now there's other tricks you can do if you want to, you know, maybe soften the background a little bit. I like it just the way it is right now, but you could go into your masking and then you can create a new mask. And let's say you want to select a subject. Lightroom has a really, really good select subject. And now that we selected the subject, you can add just some contrast or whatever you want to the subject. Or you can go through these three dots and invert it and now we're selecting everything by the subject and here if i want i can maybe darken it you see i can darken the background i can lighten it i'm not going to do any of that one thing sometimes i like to do is to take the dehaze down on the background and that will give it a little bit of softening and then you can bring down the blacks just a little bit so it's not so washed out and I added too much dehaze, but that sometimes makes your subject pop if you can just, you know, um, add a little bit of negative dehaze just to soften it a little bit and take away some of the contrast. So right now I'm going to delete this mask because, well, I do not want it, so I will delete it. And I'm happy with the way my image looks here. Now there is one other thing that we need to do. If I go at 100%, you will see, even though my ISO is a 320, it's because it was, a dark, it was pretty dark in the woods, and I also had to lift up the exposure quite a bit. We do have some grain in there. There's some noise, and I would like to get rid of that. My favorite program for that is Topaz Denoise. So I will go into Photo, Edit In, and Topaz Denoise AI. And I will click Edit. And now once the program opened my image, you can see it's recommending me to use standard and this is the noise uh, levels that it removes the noise and then enhance sharpness. Now this is at 100%. I'm going to zoom in at 200% just so you can see it better on YouTube. Normally I will keep mine at 100% while I'm working on my images. So if we look here, you see how the noise is here on the left and how soft is on the right before and after, before and after. But if I look at the feathers and the eyes of the hawk, you see it's adding quite a bit of sharpening. It's reducing the noise and it's sharpening. So this is the before, this is the after. Look over here at these feathers. So this is before and this is after. 
Now I could take the enhanced sharpness down and that will reduce some of that sharpness, which I do not want. But you see, we have a message here. It says, if you want even less sharpening, use low light. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click on low light. And now we still get the beautiful noise reduction. You see, this is the noise. This is without the noise before and after, before and after. But now it doesn't add that sharpening to the eye. And I prefer it this way. I feel like it looks a lot more natural before and after. So I will keep it on this. I'll just click apply. And this will save my image into Lightroom without the noise. And this is our saved image from Topaz Denoise onto Lightroom. Noise free, beautiful image. It's not the best image, honestly, but you know, this is how I would go around editing my bird photos. I thought we will break, uh, take a little break from the product photography and do a little bit something different. So that's why I decided to create this video tonight. Now, I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing. I'll see you in my next video.